Rigging should not be as hard as it is. So today I'll walk you through my workflow for rigging human characters that you can use in your games and Blender. And it only takes a couple minutes instead of like an hour to get it all set up. Let's hop in right now. So this tutorial I'm going to run through quite quickly. This is definitely not for beginners, but if you want to get a full course on how made characters and how to rig characters in depth, we have like an hour lesson dedicated to the rigging and the weight painting, then check the first link in the description to find out more. So number one, I have one add-on that I use to speed up my workflow and I use it very differently to how people normally do. So if I go edit preferences and then open add-ons, I'm just going to search for Rayify. And most of the time people kind of use this for this like preset generated rig, but I'll show you how I actually use it. So firstly, just go shift day and go armature, Rayify, basic human. Cool. And you can see we get this little character in here. And if you want to get your correct like scale for your character or the heart, uh, you can go open this right panel with N uh, and then you can go item and you can see the heart on the Z axis here. So get this working to whatever heart you want your character. So my scale is to get like, I don't know, 175. I guess that's good. And to get our character to the same heart, I'm going to make sure that my 3D cursor is in the center of my scene. So go shift desk cursor to world origin. And then I'm going to go select everything that isn't the rig. So I'm going to control an I to invert my selection. And then I'm going to just shift select the shirt so that it's highlighted. Uh, Cause if it's not highlighted, it's not going to work well. And then go up here, change this to 3D cursor. And now if you scale, you'll see it scales to the center. So I'm just going to get this to a similar heart as the rig. That's all good. And then just change this all back median point and we're good. Now to actually start rigging, I'm going to go select the rig, go to this little uh, stick man type thing, scroll down to viewport display. I'm just going to choose in front is on so I can kind of see through the mesh, just makes life a little bit easier. Cool. So the thing to get this done, I'm just going to go tab to go to edit mode and then I'm going to select these bones, uh, this, you don't need these and this one behind the foot. These are just extra ones for Regify. We don't need these. So I'm just going to turn on X mirror in the top right. And now if I go X to delete, X not working. I'm just going to press delete and bones. There we go. Cool. Now we've got a working thing. And with this X mirror on, you can see if I move stuff around, it's symmetrized. Now for placing bones to make it a lot easier for you, go up to the top, choose over here and change the snapping from the default, which is increment to volume. All right. And you can turn this on by default or like just keep it on it permanently with this little a horseshoe, but I'll show you how to use it without that. So if we just move something, so we select a point like this and just go G, I can hold control and start snapping. And now you see it's supposed to be snapping to the center, which it's not. And the reason it's doing that is because I actually have multiple layers with the clothing and the arms and stuff like that. So to what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the body mesh. So I have underneath, and then I'm going to shift select the rig and go shift H that hides everything other than these two. And you can see now I just have the base mesh and the rig. Cool. So now I'm going to go edit mode on this rig again. And now if we go G and then hold control to snap it to the like arm bone, then you can see it's lined up in the center and everything's good. And now you can repeat this for everything else. So there, place the, uh, the wrist, place the shoulder, and then we can place these shoulder bones up here. If you're working in a game, having these all separated might not be great. So what you can do is if you just bring these two together, select both of them, go control P, and connect it. And you can see now it just shifts it over slightly. So you might have to reposition your bones, but yeah, there you go. Um, and also the neck for some reason is also not joined together. So I'm going to select both control P by connected. And you can even do the same thing if you want over here. Just go, uh, let's just go place this kind of relatively in the center because it's going to move everything. And then just select this like shoulder bone, select this top control P connected. Okay. And you might just have to grab this and then just shift it back over. And yeah, there we go. Again, if it messes up, you can literally just place it very quickly, uh, which is what's nice about this whole thing. Now for the middle, the spine, just go G and then shift and X, and then that will lock the X axis. So it can't move side to side, but it can move up and down and back and forth. So there we go. I'm just going to kind of place it at the top of like the torso kind of area, because this would be the rib cage. So that's where you want one bone. And I'm actually going to dissolve one of these. I'm just going to select this and go delete, dissolve bones. You can also use control X if you want. And then G, shift X, bring it up to the kind of the top of the pelvis kind of area. So you kind of have these kind of three sections in it. And then again, G, shift X, and kind of place the bottom one. And you can see there, this is where they all are right now. Cool. That is the spine done. And then we can just quickly place the neck. 
Um, actually, you can do the exact same thing. Control X, and that dissolves that part. So we need we need one bone for our neck. We don't need multiple. And there we go. Just move the head into position, and yeah, that's all good for that part. The hand can obviously go placed back there, and I'll show you how to rig the fingers in a moment. Let's just get the legs done quickly. So for the legs, I'll select the top like this, and then hold Control, and I'll snap it to the top of the top of the legs. Okay, and then instead of placing the knee now, I'm going to select the the ankle and place that one. And then the reason I do this is because when I do the RK rig later, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, this is going to help a lot in terms of getting the knee placed exactly in the center of these two bones. So to get it, I'm going to select the top bone and then the bottom bone, like you select just the circles, go shift and S and go cursor to select it. Then I'm going to select this bone, shift S and selection to cursor. Okay, and you see it's your place exactly in the center of these two bones. And then I'm just going to drag it forward so that when we start animating, uh, Blender is always going to default to bring your knee forward because obviously your legs don't do that. They do that. So there we go. We've got the knees placed. And then for the feet, you should just go place the like foot bone and then the toe bone. And there you go. You've got most of your character rigged ready. So for the hat, now you actually have to learn how to build a rig. So you can just go select a part like this, go shift and D to duplicate. And then you can see it has this little line, which means it's connected. But when the line goes to that, it actually means it's parented to this bone over here. So we'll fix that in a moment, but let's just get the finger set up. So I'm going to G, hold control and snap it to the top of the finger like that. G, hold control, snap it there. Uh, and if you want, you can also fix this rotation. Just go Alt R. Uh, we can actually do it on the whole thing. It might actually mess up a little bit. Uh, but if you want to get your bones facing the right way, you can just set it to zero and then get it as close to looking like straight like that. And you can fix all of that if you can on all the different ones. So there. So setting it to zero might work on some of them. It kind of depends on the bone. Same thing with the finger. If we get it just lined up so it kind of straight on like that. Okay. And then you can see I have two joints in my fingers, which is not normal. You usually have three, but it's fine. Go right click, subdivide, and you can see now I have two bones. So I can just go hold control and snap it halfway through. And then that didn't really place well. So I'm just going to redo it like that. Yeah, that's better. Cool. We can do the same thing. We can even grab this. Just go shift and D and then just snap it like this. There we go. Check that's all lined up correctly. Okay. And now if you go to pose mode in the top left, go pose mode here. You can see the fingers aren't actually following. They're following the arm, as I said before. So go to edit mode, select both of these fingers, select the hand bone, control P and keep offset. And you can see now the lines line up like that, which means that's going to follow the hand bone. Okay. And now for the thumb, just select the hand bone, go shift and D. And then you could, well, actually you could extrude it out or I'm just going to shift D, put it here, snap it there. And then again, G hold control, snap it there. I'm just going to right click subdivide and then get this kind of, it's kind of set up like this. Okay. And then same thing, select the thumb bone, select the hand bone, control P and keep offset. And here we go. We've got a default rig, which is called an arc, uh, FK rig. Okay. And you can see you can rig, you can move everything around. Obviously the character doesn't follow. If you wanted to just select your mesh and then select your rig, control P and automatic weights. There we go. You can see now it's working, but let me show you some easy ways to make your animation a lot easier. So this is by using a RK rig and RK is just an easy way of controlling stuff like the legs. Let me show you. So to set it up, just go to side view and then just drag select the circle to get both sides. Go extrude with E, Y to pull it back. And then we have these two bones. Select both of them, go Alt and P and go clear parent because we want to, this is going to control kind of the legs. So we don't want these to be parented to the legs. So to name these, I'm going to go F2 and then I'm just going to go call this leg rk.l okay and then for the other side i'm going to go paste it back in and go leg rk.r and if you didn't see with this rigify thing you see that every single bone has a name dot l or dot r and this is kind of the reason why i use rigify it's just to kind of keep a consistent naming basis if you want to keep it consistent with everything else you'll probably actually go leg uh underscore uh okay that's just kind of how the rigify way does it but yeah, so there, I'm just going to paste that in dot R. Now, the next thing we do is go control tab to go to pose mode and then select the RK bone, then select the shin, go shift and I and go to active bone, All right? And you can see this bone goes yellow 
And immediately, if we start moving around, you'll see this go. character goes haywire. But you can see the potential of what this is going to do. So I'm going to do this on the other leg as well. Shift R to active selection. And you can see we can start moving our character around like this. But obviously, it starts controlling the upper body, which we don't want. So what we do, select the shin, go to this panel over here, which is the bone constraints panel. Then change the chain length to two. And the reason we do that is because the leg is two bones. And then that's how many bones you want to control. So you see, if we go one, it literally just controls the like calf like this. And if we change it to two, you can see it controls the whole leg like that. There we go. So same thing here, change the chain length to two. And there we go. We've got the RK working like this. Okay, and now you can see as we move it around, the feet kind of go all haywire. So the easy way to fix this is go select the bone, go to the bone constraints tab, or just the bone tab, I mean. And then open this little relations tab and turn off inherit rotation. Now you see if I pull this whole thing down, you see the foot stays still, and then that can just be what you control it with. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So just go here, inherit rotation, turn that off. And for these two RK bones, turn deform off like that. The reason we do that is when you export them, these deform bones won't get exported along with the rest of them. Then go tabs, go to edit mode. I'm going to select these two bones like this, go extrude Y again. And these are for the pole target, which is to control where the knee points. Select these two, go Alt and P, go clear parent and go G, Y, and you can pull it all the way forward like this. We basically want to be able to bring our leg like all the way out and not have it interfere with this. Okay. In terms of names, I'm just going to go F2 again. And we're going to go call it leg underscore pole and then go dot L. And we're just going to copy this, go to the other side, F2 and name it dot R. There we go. Now go back to pose mode and then select the shin go to the bone constraints. You see it says this pole target option here. So just choose your rig and then we're going to go find the bone. So just type in pole. And you can see leg pole L. That's why having good naming convention is very helpful. So change the pole target or the pole angle to negative 90. I think it's always negative 90. I think it might depend on your bones or whatever. But basically, uh, if you go back and forth in any mode, you can see kind of is how it adjusts. And I think this might also be calculated based on the roll. So if we set our roll back to zero, uh, no, nothing changes. But yeah, so you can t you can dial this in if you want to get it as close as you can to working uh, as your thing. And yeah, there we go. So we can copy this value and then let's just go here. Pole target, we go mesa rig, bone, we go uh, pole.r, leg pole.r, and just paste in that value. And there we go. Now you can see the legs are working all fun. And you can see, so we can bring it up and down. We have all this nice control. And when we move the legs around, we don't have the feet rotating. So you can still rotate the foot manually if you want. Uh, yeah, and there you go. You can see the difference between the RK and FK is basically you can kind of grab the top bones and then that controls everything else. Whereas before, like FK, you have to just kind of get the top. So the whole thing of forward kinematics, which is FK, uh, is you go down the group of bones like that. Whereas RK, you can go up. So you just change the top one and it changes everything else down. So now you know how to rig your characters in under 15 minutes, but you actually need to get it working properly with all your clothing and getting your character to actually follow it. So watch this video to learn how to get rid of all your clipping issues and everything while weight painting your characters.